Mm. Hey fellas, welcome to another exciting episode here at Prime Auto Works headquarters. And in this episode, we're going to paint Tamiya's 148 scale P38 Lightning. Now this is the first time I built this kit. Uh, this is the F or G model and uh, I intended it to be the F model, but I had to use some G parts because I put it in flight and that's just kind of the way things worked out. And so I have a blank canvas. Now it took me about three or four days to build this. It was a little bit more complicated than what I had anticipated. Uh, closing up the wheel bays was not the easiest thing to do. And if I ever build this again, I'll show you how I did it. But it was kind of experimental the way I went about it. And, uh, but I got it figured out. So uh, it could have been worse. Could have been better, but it could have been worse. But I think that they're going to be okay. So a little bit of sanding and finagling and, you know, whatever. Um, but I've got it all together and I think it looks pretty good in primer. So we are going to paint it. Now, as far as paint goes, I know I'm going to do the olive drab with the gray bottom. And let's see. Uh, I thought about, I will probably end up doing, uh, Miss Virginia here, um, right there. And probably just use the decals. I'm not sure. Oh, I don't want to, but I may. Who knows? <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, uh, and, and to be honest with you, I'm kind of like, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. But I do know that I'm going to do some chipping and do the olive drab and the gray bottom. With So let's go ahead and get started with that. And then we'll figure out the rest later. So I've got it, obviously I've got it in primer, and for my primer I use Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 Gray. I did that yesterday, everything's nice and smooth. Look at that, oh, it's nice and smooth. So now, since I am going to do some chipping, and I'm going to use hairspray chipping, so I want to put, lay down a coat of Extreme Metal, AK Extreme Metal Aluminum. Now, this is my, this is my favorite metalizer paint. I do have Alclads, but I just, I never, I don't know, I've never liked them. <laughs> it's, they're kind of finicky. This is like stupid proof. Uh, so that's what I'm going to use, but I'm not going to spray the whole thing down. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray in areas that I know I'm going to chip heavily. So I'm going to, I'm going to spray like the nose, the, uh, the leading edge of the engine cowls here, and then right along the walkways and then along the leading edges of the wings. And then I will spray the entire uh, props and the nose cone on the props. So uh, the rest of it, if I do decide to do uh, some other ch little chipping around some other parts, I will probably just hand brush those on with uh, like a light gray or something if I, if I decide to go that route. But for the areas that I know I'm going to chip heavily, I'm spraying down a coat of this. So let me get my respirator on. Mm. <coughs> yeah. Uh, the, uh, you don't need to thin this. It's already pretty thin. So, uh, okay. I've got my respirator on, fellas. Luke, I'm your father. Ah, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Let's, uh, move this so I don't get this stuff. I got my respirator on because this stuff is nasty. It smells bad, and uh, it, it probably isn't good for your lungs. I do have a window open, and I got a fan on. So, yeah, let's see here. You can see how thin that is. So it's really thin. Uh, Get my plane. So let's go ahead and start spraying the nose.
And I probably should have used my... <clears throat> I've got some greeblies in there. I don't like the look of that. That's not good. But we're going to keep going because that's just the way I roll. All right, so this is what it's looking like. Uh, not too bad. And I do have, like I said, you got some greeblies up here. So I'm going to let that dry and see if I can try to get those out. I don't want to touch it now because it's probably still a little wet. But, and I may come along here and spray a little bit more right along here. It's best to spray a little more than you think you're going to chip, just so you have that option. So, all right, I'm going to uh, go ahead and get on with spraying the propellers. And then once this is dry, we'll put down our hairspray and then we'll come back and uh, do our, our uh, olive drab in gray colors. So I've let this dry for about uh, half an hour. I think it should be fine. Now, I'm not going to lay my base coats on for a little bit. But uh, what I want to do now is I want to lay down some chipping fluid. And the chipping fluid that I'm using is just hairspray. I forgot what brand this was, but uh, I just decanted it. And you can airbrush it on. Now, I am going to spray probably two or three light coats. I'm not going to go real heavy. It tends to beat up. And um, so I'm going to... If, if you try to spray one heavy coat, it's just going to be splotchy. So let's go ahead, throw some of this in here. And I am just going to spray where I've sprayed my aluminum. Okay. So let's uh, get in here. And you probably won't be able to see where I'm spraying. But it is coming out, if you can see that on my... on my glove there. And it's kind of hard to see where I'm spraying it. <laughs> I mean, I can see it. I don't know if you can, but I can just barely see it where I'm spraying. And that's why I'm going to do like uh, three light coats, just so I make sure I get it covered. It's been a while since I, I've done this. So. This should dry pretty quick. So by the time I'm done, I can probably come back and spray it again. I did spray the uh, the tail as well, the leading edges of the tail with aluminum off camera. And because I can't see this very well, 
it's best to kind of take it by sections. This thing I can tell is going to be a <laughs> pain to a pain to spray just because of the way it is. Trying to get trying to hold on to it. One of the good things about having it in flight is I've got a little handle here that I can hold on to. Hopefully it doesn't fall off. It's on there pretty tight, but... Okay. Now for the propellers, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to worry about uh, spraying the actual blades. But I am going to spray it because I'm going to do something different with it, with the blades. But I am going to spray the nose cone here. Or the cones. Whatever they call these things. Because we are going to chip those a little bit. Now after you put this down... You can even wait a few days before you come back and chip these. You don't have to chip it right away. Now, some chipping fluid, you do have to have to do it uh, within, you know, uh, a few hours. This, uh, you don't. You can pretty much, I've, I've been able to chip this like three or four days after I've sprayed it on. So, and water is going to be the activator. And I'll show you how I do all that. I think I've shown it before, but we'll go over it again. Uh, we'll use water to activate it, and then we can just chip it up with a coarse brush and some toothpicks. So I'm going to go ahead and lay down my second and third coats of this hairspray, make sure I get everything, and uh, let this let this uh, dry. And I will probably come back later today and then start laying down my base coats. Okay, so I'm going to do a lot of this off camera just because <laughs> this is really complicated and trying to get in here in the camera and get everything sprayed where it needs to go is going to be rather difficult. So just to give you an idea what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use two colors. I'm gonna use for the bottom, I'm gonna use medium gray and I can darken and lighten this up depending on how, how it, uh, it looks when it gets on the model. Uh, I'm also gonna use olive drab, just XF62. And what I've done is I've lightened it a little bit with deck tan, so you can see it's a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna spray the whole thing the uh, whole upper surface with a light olive drab. And then I'm gonna come in and do some post shading with a real diluted olive drab mixture. And then what I've got is I've created some masks. Let's see, grab a couple here. Because I wanna keep this somewhat consistent with the demarcation between the olive drab and the gray, I've got these masks here that I've cut into three layers of blue tape. So it's rather thick. So what I can do is just line this up, just along here. And after I spray my olive drab down, then I can come in and this should be enough thickness to give me a somewhat of a soft line if I spray at an angle. And, and rather than using like um, this poster putty, which I don't like to use, or just taping it off with regular tape, which will give me a really a, a really um, fine demarcation line. I want a little bit soft, so I'm hoping this will give me just enough soft of a line, but not too soft, especially at this scale. It's a little bit smaller scale than I'm used to. Um, I could come in here and uh, freehand it, but I'm still going to get a little softer of a demarcation line than I want, so hopefully this is going to work. And then once I get these down, then we'll come back and we'll uh, start chipping it. And hopefully this paint's going to chip up like I want it to. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I don't have much luck at that. Alrighty, fellas, it's been about uh, 16 hours since I threw on the hairspray. I'm going to drink some coffee here, fellas. Get woken up. Uh. 
So it's been about 16 hours and this should still work. I'm highly confident it's gonna work. Now this is <laughs> this is where it, it can get out of hand really quick. <clears throat> I've already done the propellers, the spinners and the propellers. And I'm not sure that I like them, so I may spray over them. <clears throat> now, I had chipped the tips of them, and I didn't like it, so I just sprayed over it. And that's a good thing with this. If, if you don't like it, just go back over and spray over it. It's no big deal. So, uh, yeah, I think, I don't know. I may tone down the chipping. I Usually what happens is I over-chip, and then I have to come in and spray it <laughs> and respray it, which is fine. It's no big deal. So let's take some water. Not coffee. Although coffee might. I don't know. Let's try some coffee. See what coffee does to it, fellas. Ooh, coffee. You know, coffee might actually like stain it and give it like a nice. Because I've seen, uh, <clears throat> was it Adam Savage on Tested? He's like built models and stuff. And I thought I recall him uh, using coffee to, to weather stuff. Okay, so I've got it wet and you can see it's wet. <clears throat> and this is a flat paint, so the water kind of soaks in there. And I'm just taking a toothpick and I'm going along the edge of this little thing. And I'm just barely touching it. Scratching up that Tamiya. Now, <clears throat> this Tamiya paint, I did use the lacquer thinner. So, <clears throat> for those of you that think there might be an issue with <clears throat> the lacquer thinner, making it a little more durable. I think it does make it more durable, but <clears throat> it doesn't really have an effect on, on this on the amount of chipping I can do. And this plane is <laughs> kind of, this is a bear to paint. <clears throat> so I, I showed you some pictures, but yeah. The uh, the masking worked out. It did, it really did work out. And I don't know if I can show you. See there? <clears throat> Man, I got a frog in my throat this morning. Yeah, the masking really did work out. I really like how that turned out. Um, but it's just hard getting in the airbrush in the, into like different spots without hitting something. <laughs> this is this is a difficult plane to to, to uh, paint. Now I did a thirty second scale one, <clears throat> and I don't remember it being this bad. And maybe it's because it was thirty second scale, and I had a little bit more room, but. I'm just taking a little bit more water. And this is one of those things where you can chip a little bit, put it down, and then come back. Now, if you get too much water on here and it sits, it will really start to tear up really quick. usually go overboard with this post haste so this time I'm just gonna I'm gonna try to take my time try to save myself a little bit of extra spray booth time Okay, we'll go all around this one. That's my belly growling, fellas, it's my belly. All right. So let's, I'm gonna have to pull up a picture, but <clears throat> I'm gonna chip right along this area here. 
right along where they would walk on the wing. But I kind of want to look at a picture while I do it, and the picture's on my phone. <clears throat> because I this is something that I'm I I will have a tendency to to go overboard. But I can take a soft bristle brush as well. And I can start chips that way once that water starts to soak in. Now I've just barely hit it with this brush. We'll dry it off and you can see the tiny little, tiny little scratches that you get in the paint with this bristled brush. This is a pretty stiff brush. Get a Q-tip so you can see this. See those tiny little scratches in the paint? So, <clears throat> all right, this is gonna take me forever. <laughs> so, uh, but you get the idea of what I'm doing. I think I've shown this before. So. I don't know. Watch one of my other videos. I show it. Actually, I've probably spent more time here just chatting, shooting the shit than actually doing work. Okay. So there we go. <clears throat> Uh, one thing I also did uh, after I had taken the pictures that you saw, I did uh, lighten up that olive drab again just a little bit more. And then I went along and I modeled uh, some of the areas just to give a little bit more distressed look. So, and I think once I get uh, the chipping on, <clears throat> get the chipping on, get the decals or paint. I'm not sure if I'm going to paint the markings or uh, I may try. I'd rather paint them than have those crappy decals, but I don't know. We'll see. Let me get the chipping done. We'll come back, look at it, and see what we're going to do next. All right, so I've got uh, a bunch of chipping done, but <laughs> I think I might have went a little overboard. So what I can do is I can come back uh, with a fine tip airbrush with the original color and I can come in here and I can clean some of these areas up that I don't like. Okay, so I'm just going to come in here and slowly take some of this away. And let's see, some of the chipping on the leading edge of the wing I don't like. So I can come in here. And just slowly take some of that away. Right along here. Now if I try to go back and re-chip this in that area, it's probably not going to work because I've already like worn off my hairspray. But once you do this, you're not going to have chip right there anymore. I've got some real small, tiny chips right along the leading edge. And I, I like those. I think we're going to keep those. Um, I guess right here, probably not a fan of. I can just come in here. And I don't have to obliterate all of it. And some of it might actually get dulled down with the weathering. I really like this little guy. So basically it just disappears. Neat. It's neat, fellas. Mm. And with this fine tip airbrush, this is a 0 0.18 uh, millimeter needle. It's the uh, GSI Creos PS770 and I love it. That's my favorite fine tip airbrush. I used to have a Sotar 2020. It ended up, just, I don't know, I just 
quit on me. And I liked it, but I like this one actually a lot better. So I can get real fine in there. And I can just clean whatever I don't want. I can just clean it up. And this is typically what happens when I chip, just because I don't do it that often. So I, uh, let's clean this up. I tend to go overboard, but I've always got this safety where I can come back and I can just spray and take care of a, take care of it with this, with the airbrush. Ah, uh, let's see. I think. I think. Let's take care of this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this down. I'm gonna walk away and I'll come back at it later and see uh, if there's any other changes I need to do. I think I'll probably be happy with this, but if not, I can come in here and I can subtract and um, I can add a few more if I want. I don't think I'm gonna add any more chipping. I think I'm good where it is. So I'm gonna chipped up. Might have went a little more on the walkways than I anticipated or that I wanted to. But, you know what? Clean this up a little bit. Sometimes less is more. Less might be more sometimes. All right. All right, I'm going to stop, stop, set it down, come back a little bit later and take a look at it. And um, again, I haven't quite decided whether I'm going to put decals. I may just put the decal. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Okay, so I think I'm happy with the chipping. Now what I want to go ahead and do is knock out painting the turbochargers. Now I should have actually left them out and glued them in later, but I'm, I'm a big stupid head and got in a hurry. And I'm gonna I'm gonna start off by by uh, painting them this neutral gray color. Now I don't typically hand brush with Tamiya paints because they really suck for hand brushing, but I'll show you how I do it. And I'm it really doesn't matter because we're gonna weather these anyway. So if I mess up, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. So basically, what I'm gonna do is just recreate a thick wash with this um, this gray color. Get some of this neutral gray, maybe a little bit more. Now the key to this is getting it thin enough and then adding to me a paint retarder. Okay, so this is acrylic paint retarder. This will slow it, slow down the drying time so it will level out and smooth out. So I will put a couple drops of this in 
just a couple drops. And that way it is drastically gonna slow down the drying time so I don't, because I don't wanna get brush marks. Now, uh, I do use Tamiya acrylics to paint tires. And I think I've shown that in a previous video. And I do it the same way. So let's get a brush and we'll see how this mixture is, if it's too thick or too thin. Now it's gonna go on pretty somewhat translucent on the first coat. And then when it dries, we'll come back and I'll add another coat. And it is definitely okay if it's splotchy because we're not gonna leave it gray. We're gonna be doing all kinds of fun stuff with it. So I guess you could say I'm not really brushing it on. I'm more or less just getting the brush wet and then dumping the paint on the uh, the part. And uh, one other thing that's nice about this, especially having to paint around uh, all these, all the edges here, is I can just let this flow. So I don't have to actually get right up next to the part that I don't want painted. I can just let the, uh, the, paint, the paint flow where it's going to go. And it's going to give me a nice clean edge. Okay. So... I will uh, let this dry. I'll come back and I'll put another coat on it. And then once that dries, we'll come back and we'll do some other stuff to it. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to Vallejo and I'm going to use this flat brown, which is kind of a, an orangey type brown. And again, I'm going to thin it and add some paint retarder. Okay. And so the key to not getting brush marks is to use paint retarder. So this is just retarder medium by Vallejo. And I'm gonna put a little bit in here. It'll come out. Here we go. I'm gonna put a little bit of airbrush thinner. Okay. And then a little bit of this flat brown. Now, this isn't going to look look right to begin with. But what I'm trying to do, and I've done this before. I actually sprayed it on before when I did it on uh this is a book on building the B17 for um the HK models kit. And this is the look that I'm trying to achieve, okay? I'm just going to make this really thin, mix it all up. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the gray. Okay, some of that gray may not be completely dry. Let's go over here. And again, I'm really not brushing it on. I'm more or less placing it on and letting it, letting it do its own thing. Just like that.
stupid dog. Okay. Come over here and do the same thing on this one. I get a little bit on the edges, I can always come in with the olive drab and touch up if I need to. But I am going to do probably some oil work and pigment stuff on these before we're all said and done. All right, so we'll let this dry, and then I will probably hit the top of these with a little bit more. And uh, I think that's probably, I'll probably leave it at this until I get to the end, and then I'll do some pigments and stuff, probably at the end. So you're not going to actually see the finished <laughs> product right away, but uh, be patient, it'll get there. All right, so let's run through how I paint the props and then we'll finish this video out. So I've got uh, the spinner masked off and it's not masked off very well. So yeah, I think it'll be okay. Hopefully it's not masked off very well, but that's all right. And then I've got the, uh, the tips masked off. I painted those yellow. I sprayed those down. And now what I'm gonna do is instead of using black, what I like to start off with is NATO black, which is a, a real dark gray. So I'm gonna spray the whole thing with NATO black. Spray the back of them. Now the the uh, propellers on the P38 are different for each uh, wing. The left and right have a different. Uh, are how do I say this? They're reversed, so you can. I've got this labeled. <clears throat> I've got them labeled left and right because they are. The blades do uh, are positioned differently for each wing, so keep that in mind. Uh, and the last P38 that I built, the 32nd scale one, I posted a video where I had them reversed, and somebody made a comment that they're reversed. Okay, so now that I got my needle black down. I'm going to take straight black and I'm going to spray right down here at the bottom and darken up here at the bottom part of the propeller. And it gives it just a little bit more depth. So I never spray these completely black. I'm 
mix this up just a little thin. So then I get something that looks like that, okay? And then what I'll do if, uh, if I wanna, eh, let's see. If I wanna wear the tops of the propeller blades up, then I'll take some, uh, I'll show you that here in a minute. Okay, so I've got the props painted up. <clears throat> now, what I'm gonna do to add some wear along the top edge of the propeller blades is I'm going to use some Vallejo airbrush thinner. Now, this stuff will not harm the metallic paint that I have underneath, the AK Extreme Metal, okay? But it will remove, slowly it will remove, the Tamiya acrylics. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a Q-tip, dip it in the Vallejo. I don't want to soak this down because then I'll just have a mess. Okay, so then all I'm going to do is I'm going to run along the top here of my propeller blade. I'm just going to add a little bit of wear. So I'm just removing some of that, that paint, the uh, Tamiya paint, and letting the metallic paint underneath show through. It doesn't take much. You can see it's coming off on my brush. Now, I don't want to use uh, isopropyl alcohol or, um, or Tamiya thinner because that's a little too strong. This Vallejo stuff is just strong enough so I can control what I remove. Like that. Now you do want to uh, you do want to change out your your Q-tip. Do the same thing along the back side here. Every blade or so, because it does build up paint. You don't want to smear all that all over the place. right along the leading edge of this prop. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna get the other one taken care of and then we'll come back and look and see what we've done so far and um, figure out where we're headed. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at what we've got accomplished and uh, we will pick it up on the next video. I think I am going to paint the circle and the star, <clears throat> the insignia. But the lettering for Miss Virginia and the numbers, I think are just too small for me to mess with. I could probably do it if I really work at it. But uh, I think I'm going to use the decals for those. But the, the, uh, the star insignia, I can go ahead and paint that on. That's not going to be an issue. No, that, sh that should be pretty easy. So we will cover that on the next episode. And uh, there we go. 
it is coming along. Don't know how it's going to turn out, but we, we will soon see. All right, I will uh, catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching, fellas.